So welcome to this uh, day's seminar, webinar, The Role of the Jury. And um, for you who do not know me, my name is Tina Beiter. I have been a former weightlifter myself in the last uh, century. And I have been category one referee, technical official since 2012. I'm the vice president of EWF. And I have been the chairwoman of technical committee since 2016. I have also been executive board member of EWF since 2016. I've been a jury president at EWF championships since 2016, 17. And I have been jury president or jury member at the latest IWF World Championships in Anaheim, Ashgabat, and I was technical controller in Pattaya in Thailand 2019. And then I was the jury member together with our general secretary in uh, Tokyo at the Olympic Games. So welcome and uh, feel free to ask questions. Patrick will help. He will stop me talking and he will uh, give me the questions you might have. Uh, otherwise, it's also possible when we finish the presentation to ask questions anyway. So thank you so much to IWF for help and to the uh, EWF president and the general secretary of EWF for fantastic support for these webinars. So I just think we should start now. So the jury has the control of the field of play. And it's not just the jury president. It's all jury members who has uh, who have to to pay attention to everything that all the rules have been followed and all the rules in TCRR are being correctly followed and applied. And then, as you know, all the jury members must be category one technical officials and they have to be from different countries. And at an IWF event, the jury is composed of three or five members each. And in each jury group, there will be a president. And for senior, junior youth, world championships, Olympic games and youth Olympic games, there will always be a five member jury. You know, and yes, we can only see the first page. Oh, okay. Okay, then I will have to stop sharing. And I will start all over. And then I will do this one. Is this better? Now we can see the second. Yes. And now you can see the third. Yep. Yes. OK. So I have to do it like this. OK. So what, why, what I was saying is that if it's a world championship, Olympic Games, or, or very big competitions, there will be a jury of five. And if it's a European championships and not a qualifying competition, then it will be a jury of three. And it's always a possibility to have reserve jury members as well. And we will do that, I think, for the first time in Europe, while I have been on this position, we will have four jury members in each group because we will be working very hard also. And for me, the most important role for the jury, and especially when I'm a jury president, it's to check that in the beginning, the way in is running smoothly, to check that all the ITOs are feeling good and are ready to have a great championships or competition, and to check with the chief marshal, is everything okay? Is the screen okay? Do they have enough screens? We should not do that uh, 15 minutes before the competition, but you know, just to be sure that everything is okay, enough pens, computers are working, etc. And for the technical controllers, is allocation of the warm-up platforms okay? Have they experienced any problems with the athletes, coaches? Is, are they in doubt about the taping, the uniform, the unitard, whatever? Just to make sure that everybody are comfortable. And for the timekeeper, comfortable with the system and knows English. And for the referee, check that the way in is okay, how the group are working, etc. So this is what I do every day, every time I'm on duty. It's very important for me because if we cannot do this on our own, if the chief marshal is working, that's great. But if the technical controller, the timekeeper is not going well, 
then we don't have a competition. So it's very important that everybody is feeling good and are ready to work. And always to let the ITOs know to come to the jury president or the jury members. If any doubt, if any questions, to give us coffee. That's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and here you see a five person jury that's from Ashgabat in uh, Turkmenistan. And we have on the other side, a three person jury. And uh, again, this is from the Nordic Championships. We have Denmark, Norway, and Finland represented. And then the official uh, photo of all the technical officials. And actually, for three years ago, on this date, we made a historical moment because we had a jury of five women. This has never happened before, and it will probably never, ever happen again. But we wanted to make a statement that for many, many years, it has only been men in the jury. And now we had five very good technical officials. So we could make a, a women's jury. So this was in, in Georgia, in Batumi, 2019, the 6th of April. So that's a very good date. So what is important to know for you who has been away for a while or for you who has never been in the jury, that there will be the presentation of the ITOs on the platform. And then the ITOs will go down of the platform and then they will wait because now it's time for the presentation of the jury. But the ITOs, they will hand over their ITO cards, but just after the presentation and the speaker will say, and now we have the presentation of the jury. And then he will start with, as jury president, it is blah, blah, blah. And as a jury member, blah, blah, blah. And jury member, blah, blah, blah. And then when he is finished with the reserve, then all the ITOs will go and give their ITO cards and shake hands or give knuckles or whatever we do now in these days. And then it is time for picture a Kodak moment. Then all the ITOs will go behind the jury members and then we take photos for history, for good memories, to show our grandchildren, our wives, our husbands, children, etc. It's not every time we do it, but especially in the beginning, in the first groups, we will do it, but we are always ready for a picture. So just remember it yourself. So Throughout the course of the competition or the event, and after observing the work of the ITOs, the jury members may, may highlight any special occurrences by uh, the way of a written report. It is always the duty of the jury president in one of the groups to do a written report about how the competition has been running if we have any special things we would like to discuss or to be taken care of or to have uh, options of the next competition, what should we be prepared for? And, um, and now it, it, here it says that uh, you will hand over the report to the technical uh, committee person and in Europe it is me, uh, but I cannot participate in all competitions. So I hand over the assignment to uh, other technical committee members. And if we don't have any technical com committee members, we hand over the assignment to someone we know can fulfill the, the duty. And throughout the course of the competition and after a first warning, the jury also are able to replace a technical official. If something happens, if uh, a decision proves him or her to be incompetent. So the jury can take a, uh, a talk with a technical official and uh, the technical official can answer why he did or she did like this. And then they will take a vote or say, okay, fine, you will get a warning or, or we cannot use you anymore. Please go as a reserve. 
this happens very often. Uh, sorry, very rare. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, very very rare, of course. So, so, but the impartiality of the technical official is not to be doubted. So we look at the referees, the tick timekeeper. We look at all the ITOs if they are impartial. It's very, very important that we look at the lift and not at the flag. So, for instance, if we have a Danish lifter on the platform, I give her a wide lift, even though there is a bend extend in the arm, but it's from Denmark and she's, oh, she got it over the head. But I have to look technically, was it a good lift? Was it not a good lift? And I do not care if she was from Denmark, Sweden, Ukraine or Romania. So, so this is what the jury member also looks for. And also here, if we witness this, they, they can be, you know, called up and, and then to answer the jury. So the jury also has the power to reverse a decision when the referee's decision has been judged unanimously by the jury to be technically incorrect. You hear it many times, we have a jury stop, the jury have reversed the decision and 90% of the time or 95% of the time it's for a good lift to a no lift and the five to 10% it's from a no lift to a good lift. And in order to reverse the decision, the jury may call the referees to give an answer of why they did referee judge like that when uh, all the jury members have another color on their screen so so they can seek an explanation and um, and then it's it's possible to reverse the decision and if the explanation is accepted and we okay okay so you saw yes yeah, well good then no action will be taken but if the explanation is not accepted by the jury they will reverse the decision. And such a decision and its reason must be communicated to the athletes or the team official, and it will be through the technical controller. So the technical controller will be called every time there's a jury stop, the technical controller will enter the jury table uh, and be ready to, to listen to what is going on. And then the technical controller will go to the speaker, the announcer, to say it's a good lift, it's a no lift, or it's a no lift due to bend extend, or it's a no lift due to whatever it could be. And then to go to the team official, not directly to the athlete, but to the team official and say, it's a no lift or uh, it's a good lift. It's very important to do that. So, when the decision of the majority of the jury members differs from what, from what of the referees' decisions, the jury may call again all the referees in question to seek an explanation. And here, if the explana explanation is accepted, nothing will happen. But if the explanation is not accepted and the jury reaches unanimity, the referee's decision will be reversed. And this is if you have a five person jury, because in events where the composition of a three member jury is appointed, unless unanimity, they have to have the same color. Uh, it's a good lift or no lift. Then we cannot change the decision. If one have white in the jury and the two others have red, it's a majority, but in a three person jury, it's not enough everybody has to be equal and have the same color of no lift or good lift. So in order to apply the above rule, the jury members have to give their decision on each lift using the jury control unit lo located on the jury table. So the jury members adjudicate the lift once the athlete has replaced the bubble on the platform. So this is different from when you are refereeing because you have to give a down signal as soon as the barbell is uh, under control. But here, as a jury member, you will not put your decision until the bubble has been replaced on the platform. 
because many things can happen. And as a jury member, you're not, you cannot change your decision. You cannot, you don't have two seconds to change. You are sure what happened. So, so this is why you have to, to wait until the lift has ended. Um, yes, and each jury member shows his or her opinion by pressing a red or white button on this um, unit. And it's different from, from if it's in Europe or if it's in the world, uh, IWF, but it's still the same to press a white button or a red button. And then it's possible for the jury president to check the other jury members uh, on their opinions, if it's a good lift or not, and, uh, no lift on some kind of glance or a screen. And we talked about it last time for the technical controller, uh, how to appeal or how to, if, if some is not um, happy with a lift or a reverse from the jury. It, the jury is not a jury of appeal. There is no appeal against the ju jury's decision, except from when we are using the challenge card or the video playback technology procedure according to 337. So there you can go against the jury, but until the jury has seen um, the lift again, then they will take that decision. The jury also has the power to reprimand or to sanction an athlete or team official for displaying misconduct within the field of play. So if they are not obeying by the rules, for instance, the coach from Lithuania, he is running all over the field of play to take photos of his athletes to film them when they are lifting. And he normally goes back because then he have, has a very good view, but it's not allowed. And we say to him every time, please, you have to go back, but we can reprimand him. Or we can sanction him because he's not following the rules. He, he is not allowed in the field of play. He can be in the coach zone. That's where he can be. So this was just an example. But in particular, for instance, if the misconduct or either by actions or words represents a threat to a technical official from IWF or EWF personnel during the performance of their duties, the president of the jury in conjunction with the president of IWF or EWF, whichever competition it is, they can um, make an execution of any reprimand or sanction. For instance, in uh, it's many, many years ago, but I remember in 2009 in Landskrona for the Youth and Junior Championships, there was, uh, I think the lifter was from also Lithuania. It's not because I'm going for Lithuania, but, but um, he was uh, getting down signal before the lift was finished because there was an obvious mistake in the lift. And he was yelling and putting his finger out and saying da, 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 da. and you can see his eyes were there were fire in them it was <clears throat> and uh, he was asked to make an apology in in a written letter uh, to the jury members and the referees uh, otherwise he would be disqualified from the competition and he did um, he did do that but it took some time so so this is what what can happen and of course we know all the frustrations and everything that comes through the mind of an athlete who has been training so hard for these lifts and then a stupid three referees or five jury members give a down signal and and come on so we can understand the frustration but still you have to behave it's not allowed to say the f word or to yell or to be threatening we will not have that tina yes i have a question mm -hmm. It's from Neklar uh, The 759, the jury is not a jury of appeal. There is no appeal against the jury's decision except for the challenge procedure according to 337. And she says, it seems wrong to me to show the challenge card against the jury's decision. Yeah, you can say that, but, but sometimes um, that's what the coaches want they don't believe they want to see it again. Normally uh, the coaches, they, they cannot see the decision. They cannot see the lift 
from where they stand correctly as we can when we have it in front. So, so they challenge us. They say, ah, you can do that better. Please let us see it again. Mm. And that's very good that we have the video to see it and we can play it reverse, forward, fast forward, fast reverse. So we have many possibilities to see the lift again. And we might have been mistaken. What, what if the lifter had we thought we thought we saw the lifter had his elbow on his knees then we have to give down signal we have to be sure oh the elbows were on the knees it's not allowed but then on the video playback it shows that they are not near but it's a shadow from this elbow then it's okay to challenge the jury but yeah this was also just an example i hope it's okay Neshla? Yeah, i think so but I guess it's, I think the same because the jury has also thought about it many times. Maybe they also have seen a video. So yes, mm. normally we don't change the decisions. No, no, we had, we had an example in, um, in, uh, in Tokyo with the a Bulgarian lifter in 102 or 109. I can't remember. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and he had clear bend extent, and they challenged us, and and we saw Milan and I we were in the jury together, and just to to be sure, and just to not to make a mistake or whatever, we saw it 20, 20 times, and they could see it on the screen as well, and the audience, the twenty audience that were allowed, they say oh, <laughs> <laughs> because they they could see it, but the coaches, nope. No. And they were very, very angry at us. But this is this is life. Yeah. Okay. Can I continue? You. Yes, mm, please. You're welcome. You're welcome. So when the decision of the majority of the jury members differs from what of the referee's decision, the jury may review referee's decision on the video playback. So if the jury is not on the same side as the referees, they can say, hey, we want to see this lift again because we think it's a good lift or we think it's a, a no lift. And then the jury can ask to have a video playback. Then that's very good because it gives us <laughs> some credit sometimes <laughs> and we need that. Um, and then it's also very important for the jury to pay attention to the 20 kilo rules. We heard a lot about the 20 kilo rules when Patrick mentioned uh, the chief marshal position. We also heard it many times last week when Taisto Coppola talked about the technical controller position. And here also, it's very important that the jury is aware of the 20 kilo rule. So when I'm a jury president, normally I give one of the jury member to uh, an assignment to, for instance, can you keep an eye on the clock to see that everything is going well and it's not a one minute lift or two minute lift or whatever, uh, and everything is on time. And then I ask the other jury member to pay attention to uh, the 20 kilo rule. And then I will sit and have the view as a jury president. So, so this, is, this is a good way or, or maybe to do the protocol. If the system breaks down, then we can continue with a written protocol. It's not so often it happens, but sometimes we have a breakdown and, and then we actually can continue with a written protocol. So, so this is good to have some assignments in the jury so you don't just you know look and press the button. So, so this is what I, I do when I'm a jury president, as, uh, for instance. So when we have a reserve jury member, they have to sit in a, in a somewhere else, but at the jury table. Um, we try to find a seat next to the reserve referee. So we know where they are and that we can call them, uh, uh, call them if we need them. So it's, it, it must be very clear that we are either three jury members or five. We are not six or four. If you saw the Olympic games, it looked like we were 10 in the jury because the video playback team, they sat next to us and there was not a visible spot between us. 
so so uh, so so that's in my opinion not good but there was no room to do it so we had to have have the big table so but it's very important to have the five or three and then the reserve member would sit next to re the reserve referee yes and it's also very important that the jury members they keep an eye on, on the technical of officials especially the referees during the victory ceremony where they had to sit and for instance if we have a turkish referee as a center referee and uh, we have a turkish medal uh, bronze medalist and uh, the general secretary asks the turkish referee to be medal presenter of course you say yes and then one of the jury members sits or the reserve referee will sit. So this is for television and for the audience to see that that we do we do care and we sit and we respect the lifters and the winners. Uh, and of course, if we are being asked to do the medal ceremony, then we of course accept and say yes, thank you very much and and we will help you find a reserve. And also the president or the jury members, they have to pay attention to if one of the B lifters are going to get a medal in the A group. So, because it's very important that the B lifter or C lifter or whatever lifter, but who is not participating in the A group, if they are not present, they will not get their medal. So if we can see that, wow, she will get a medal. For instance, in Batumi, Georgia, uh, the Israeli girl in the 71 or 76 kilo class, she won the B group and she was um, very, she was, she got a medal, a bronze medal. And we tried to contact her and call her and she, she got there just in time. So this is very important that we also pay attention to the scoreboard and see, oh, this is a very, oh, this is close. Whoa, we should try to call the general secretary to see, can you find, can you see where is he or where is she? So this is also something the jury members must pay attention to. So we also have to, to, to look if something goes wrong and it's not the lifter's fault, but it's something outside. If it's uh, the loaders they put on wrong weight, or if the platform is very slippery or something happens, um, then it's possible for the jury to give an extra attempt to the lifter. But it, it cannot be because the lifter had bent extended. We thought, oh, you could do another lift. Please take a fourth lift. It is, if it's, I can remember in Romania, uh, all the athletes with the yellow Nike weightlifting shoes, they were, the, slippery they almost fell every time they lifted so we tried to do something with the platform and some of them got a new lift because it was yeah it was like being on the ice for them so and and if the loaders put wrong weight on or if some of the weights they f fall off or you know moves then the jury will decide is this another lift we also had a competition where the lights went off so, and the, it was a lifter from Greece and she continued, but we had no idea what she was doing because it was completely black. We gave her, of course, a new lift and the light came on and she, she got it three zero. So that's good. Also the jury, they have to decide whether the small disc should stay inside the color or outside. And if we have Elico, then the discs can easily be outside of the colors, but some of the other companies, they don't have the same grip on the small discs. So sometimes it's, we have to, to take the small discs inside the colors, but this is something we uh, talk about. And we, when we uh, investigate or we, we uh, look at the field of play and, and check everything. So, and also if there has been an error in loading, for instance, as I, I said before, or the speaker make a mistake. Now we have the, the best speaker in the world, Mokronovsky is here also, and he never made mistakes, but, but sometimes 
a speaker can do a mistake. And then, of course, it's, it's also possible to get a new attempt. Yes. And it's also the president of the jury's job to sign all the official technical officials card and also all the documents, the protocols, everything is, is very important to, to be seated and then to sign. And also the, yeah, the final uh, competition protocol. So I would like to say a big thank you to EWF for supporting so the technical committee could prepare the online seminars this spring. Special thank you to Patrick and to Georgetta, to Trygve, to Arajik and to the bandit <laughs> with a mask, Tina, that's me. Because even though all the competition started again, as I also said in, in the previous webinars, it's important to keep on saying these things to us so it's yeah so we don't forget it's very easy to forget and it's very easy to take out the same persons for the same positions and um, so i hope that some of you might also be in the jury sometime but but it's also important to have very experienced people in the jury so remember to stay tuned next week on April the 12th, where Trik Bedun, also one of our technical committee members and chairman of medical committee, he will have a very good webinar about the role of the referees. So last chance for questions, or are you completely full up? <laughs> I don't see any questions, Tina, not mm -hmm. yet. And I think you have done a wonderful presentation. So it's very clear for us. It seems like Carolina Lundahl has raised her hand. So I don't know. I think, Carolina, you have to write it. Every All the questions has to be um, in the chat function because it's impossible for us to un unmute and mute again and unmute and mute. So if you have the time to write it in the chat, then Patrick will read it out loud. We have one from Dennis Hoffman. Dennis Hoffman, can you remind us what date and time soon will give the European Senior ITU web webinar before the championships? Yes, we are not uh, completely um found out the date because we need to uh, be finished with the world championships youth champion uh, junior championships in crete so we don't um, do a uh, crossover but i think it will be around the 18th or 19th of may a little um five to six days before uh, the championships we will make a technical official online seminar and we will talk about all the positions. And uh, for you who has been selected for the European Championships, we have um, done a preliminary um, positions for you, but we, I, I kindly ask the technical committee to join me for a short meeting uh, in the weekend or in the beginning of next week, because we have, um, we have some issues to discuss about all the technical officials. So, so as soon as we have that, we will send you your positions and we will send you the date of the seminar okay. or the online meeting, sorry. Yes, thank you. We have the question from Carolina. In Uzbekistan at the IWF coaching and research committee meeting, there was a proposal and it was discussed to have two challenge cards, one for your athlete and one for other athletes i guess have you heard anything about this no nope. no nope. <laughs> i think it's uh, quite enough to have a challenge card for your own athlete yeah and not for other athletes but yeah yep. exactly yeah exactly and 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 as we said last week we really hope that we have the chance to do the challenge card at the european championships because i know that easy weightlifting they have it in their system um but we have to to discuss because it's uh, 
yeah, we have to discuss it. I don't I think I said it before during my presentation, but I think it's a good idea to have one of the coaches in the warm up area. So not every coach is standing next to the platform because you don't see the lift very, very well there. So if one of them is in the uh, in the warm up area, they can see the lift much better and know why there is a red light. Yeah. Yeah, and then they can use their challenge cards uh, strategically, strategically, yeah. strategically. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot say it. They can use it in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Kaolina Lundal is saying the coaches felt that it was important to be able to challenge others also oh. for transparency. Oh. Then we can oh. <laughs> have challenges all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it, it can be, I don't like you, so I challenge you. So, but I, I can see the point. I can see uh, the point that if someone thinks that, oh, United States, they always, they always have good lifts, even though they have mm, something with their arms. And why are you always after Bulgaria? It could be like this, but I think that the challenge card is like in football. It's a good thing if you are uncertain, if you're not, if you want to challenge and see okay, I challenge you, okay, I lost, okay, I won, yeah. I think it's a good thing, but to have too many challenge cards, it will, for me, it will, yeah, I don't think it's a good thing. But yeah. I, underst I understand that why they ask for it, but I think it will make a very long competition as well. Yes. But the thing with the challenge because they are new so i guess the rules can be changed because this is something new so it should be de developed yes mm -hmm. we have many thank yous for you tina oh, excellent you. presentation <laughs> very clear as i said yes and, and 85 participants yay yeah. from all around the world from all around the world yep well then there's only one thing for me to say thank you for yep. your attention and I will stop sharing and um, oh, it's uh, yeah, you're welcome, everybody. It's uh, yeah. Patrick, will you still if someone has questions? Otherwise, I think um, we should say good night. Um, and then we look forward to next week and hope to see as many as you again. Indeed, we do. Thank you so much for the kind words and um, see Thank you next you again, week. Tina. Thank you. Thank you for helping me, Patrick. See you next week. And uh, many of you, we will see you in Tirana for the European Championships. I'm looking so much forward to being there for the whole competition. So, and we don't have any COVID in Denmark, so I'm free to go. I'm not bounded oh. to my school. So, yes. Hooray. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.